Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range with the BCM, affectionately called the Bickham. And this is the rifle that for over five years we have been shooting and we've never oiled it, never cleaned it, never ran a patch down the barrel, nothing. This gun has been absolutely abused, has five years and 8,600 rounds of ammunition through it with, again, no lubrication, nothing. And it's got five years of carbon built up in there, five years of hardening. We fired this thing in the bitter cold of winter, the sweltering heat of summer, moderate days like today where it's in the mid 60s, low humidity, and the gun has just been chugging right along. Now, what we did notice in our last video is that the carbon has hardened and accumulated to the point where this rifle is being very sluggish. The bolt and carrier, when you fire it, you can feel it go shink, 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 shink. And we did encounter a couple um, issues with feeding, especially when inserting a freshly uh, loaded 30 round magazine, dropping the bolt, it just doesn't have enough energy anymore to strip that round. So either we have to pull the charging handle at the rear a couple times to get that first round chambered. Once it starts firing, it seems to do okay, but I've had to slow my cadence down. So usually I have a very fast trigger finger and I can pop, 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 pop. And I noticed I was overrunning that bolt and carrier because it's slowing down so much. So I'm gonna try to lower my cadence in this video to see if we can keep this thing working. But it's, <laughs> guys, we have gone 8,600 rounds without even so much as a drop of oil. 8,600 rounds of Federal American Eagle 55 grain ball. And it's not only a testament to the reliability of the direct gas impingement AR-15, which was the whole point of this video, but it's also a testament to the reliability and consistency of the Federal 556-223 American Eagle ammunition we've been using throughout the duration of this test. I do wanna thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition free of charge to the channel so we can do videos like this. So it's really, really interesting to see. And again, the whole point of this whole video series that's been going on was because people five plus years ago were saying, ah, oh, DI stinks and pistons are much better. You know, you gotta use special oils and you gotta do all these crazy special things to keep a DI AR-15 running. They're just so finicky because they poop where they eat. And my experience has been the DI is the best operating system for the AR-15 that's ever been devised. It's an outstanding system. And so far, I think we've already proved that point. The fact that we've gotten as far as we have with no maintenance whatsoever to this rifle is a testament to the design. So we're, gonna, we're trying to get it to 10,000 rounds. So we have 8,600 rounds. We're gonna put another 500 through it today. That'll leave us one more video where we'll put 900 rounds through it to hit that 10,000 round mark. And then we're going to check that accuracy again on it, make sure you know that it, it's shooting somewhat well. And keep in mind, we've, we've already bore scoped this thing once thousands of rounds ago, and we're already seeing pretty heavy port erosion and stuff like that, which is perfectly normal wear for these types of rifles but it's over gassing the rifle a bit, but also it's getting caked in carbon. So it's trying to balance itself out. So anyway, let's get started today and uh, continue. We will be using the Federal American Eagle. We have the same magazines we were using last time, some Lancers, some P-Mags, and one Stenag magazine. Let's go ahead and get our tape off. We had to go pick up some new tape because this tape over the course of five years is just rotted to the point where we can't even pull it off the the roll without it tearing. So we got some new tape from the hardware store this morning. I'm gonna get that tape out of the mag well. Leave it to me. I wonder. Eh, it'll still work, so we'll leave the tape in the mag well. All right, so there we go. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, guys. This is how much carbon's in this thing. <laughs> I can't pull the bolt to the rear. <laughs> wow, that thing is seized. When I tell you this thing is filthy, I'm not kidding. I don't think, Jay, we've ever had to break this thing open like that before. Wow, that is really bad. Dude, that is... There's just no spring pressure. I think it's due to the carbon that's in there. I can see dust come out of it. I see a cloud of smoke come out of it when I let the bolt go home. To load it, we're gonna have to bang it against the table. All right, let's get her loaded and see if she works. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. 
It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business, which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. All right, guys, so Jason's telling me, and I agree, we may have to download the magazines from a full 30 down to 28 or maybe even 25 rounds, we'll see. But let's go ahead and put the first magazine in. We've got a P-Mag here and use the bolt release. Looks like she got home. All right, first magazine. Wow, it's actually kind of surprising in a good way. <laughs> Wait till she gets hot, we'll see what she does. Try the Stenag, that's one Lancer and one P-Mag. Four mags, the fifth mag, and we'll let it cool off. Wow. We had to beat this thing open this morning and she's working just like she should. Impressive. Let's let her cool off, load up some more magazines. If you remember back in the early days of this test when it first got started, we had this Caldwell barrel cooler and that thing shot craps on us and they don't make it or support it anymore. And so I was just randomly looking on the internet for another barrel cooler and I found the rifle cool and this is from Magneto Speed. And I would say Magneto Speed probably has a better reputation for quality than Caldwell. And so I wanted to try it out. Certainly much smaller, runs on a 123A battery. You push this button, it extends this little proboscis and then it has a fan on it. And when you turn it on, it just sits there and, and runs. Where's my little fan button? Right there in the front. Got pretty good airflow. So in theory, we just stick this in here like that. And I can feel air coming out of the end of the barrel. That's pretty cool. I think it runs for like seven hours. So there you go, guys, a barrel cooler. <laughs> well, she's cooled off for the most part. So let's resume. We got five more magazines. A little sluggish. We did not download, so we're still running 30 rounds.
Ooh. There we go. Had to use the Ford Assist to get her into battery. She's filthy. Wow, let's cool her off. Let's continue. This gets to us maybe having to download the magazines a little bit. that way. It is hot. So running the charging handle, we get a little extra travel, which gives it just enough ump to strip that round. So she is still working fine. Unbelievable, simply unbelievable. All right, guys, so we threw another 100 rounds in the mix. So we're gonna do 600 rounds this afternoon, which will leave us 800 rounds in our last video. Now we are using some Lancer mags and stuff like that. So we're not counting the rounds, we're just dumping all the rounds into a box and loading from the box. And every once in a while, we'll get 31 rounds into a 30 round magazine. So one magazine, as we're getting to the end of the box, we'll only have 27 rounds in it. That's because we had extra rounds in other magazines. So here we go. Last five magazines. Old girl is sluggish.
Last one. Wow, 9,200 rounds. Yeah, so much for the concept that they poop where they eat and therefore they're unreliable, right? So it leaves us 800 rounds to go. Let's let her cool off, we'll tape her up, and we got one more video to produce. I'm looking forward to it. And then we'll take a closer look at all the various components and uh, also do that accuracy test that we're talking about. Good stuff. So we're 9,200 rounds in, and given how the rifle was performing today, Jason and I both seem to think that uh, it'll probably make it to 10,000 rounds. I keep my cadence where it was today, where I'm not just pulling the trigger as fast as I possibly can. It seems like we can still work with the fact that the gun is very caked in carbon, and that carbon, again, is over five years old. Now, what we're going to do after we're done with this series of tests, we'll take a look at all the various parts, take a look at all the areas of wear, um, we may even pull the barrel out, have somebody section it like Definitive Arms and take a look at the inside of the barrel. I do have a bore scope that we'll definitely do a bore scope on it. But we've also talked about just replacing the barrel after 10,000 rounds, uh, you know, finally wiping it down, finally using some oil, chip some of the carbon out of it, replace the small springs like the extractor spring, maybe replace the extractor, and then just running it as a regular rifle. It'd be practically brand new at that point. But we will do a podcast here very soon talking about direct gas impingement, pooping where it eats, and the AR-15, the genius of the design, things that we've learned and witnessed as we've done this test that are really a true testament to the genius of Eugene Stoner, and we'll cover that in a podcast again. We should film that here pretty soon. So if you guys have any ideas as to what to do with this weapon after we're done with it, after this 10,000 rounds, just comment down below because we're looking for ideas. I don't think we're ready to give up on this thing at 10,000 rounds. I mean, if you look at it, it still looks brand new. <laughs> I mean, aside from pulling the trigger, we've really applied no wear and tear to the gun at all. So it's perfectly fine. And that's just it, guys. This is a semi-automatic. Now, you've seen tests out there like Iraq Veteran does burn down tests where he's running weapons full auto for you know a few thousand rounds and they choke. That's because of the heat. Right? And so we're purposely avoiding the heat. Typically, we're just doing five magazines, which is you know, a typical combat load, five to seven magazines. And then we're stopping. So in a semi-automatic world and a militia, you know, shiznit hits the fan type scenario, what we're doing here is very practical in terms of the number of rounds we're firing. We're not just beating the, the, the rifle to death with heat. And th again, the whole purpose of this was just to see how it handled the carbon, because it goes back to people saying the rifles poop where they eat, that direct gas impingement's unreliable compared to gas piston guns, all this other nonsense. That's the whole reason we started this test. This isn't to say that they, you know, the M M16 or AR-15 can handle 100,000 rounds. That's not what we're trying to prove here. We're just talking about the gun, its operating mechanism, the fact that it you know, fires carbon back into the, the receiver area because of the direct gas impingement or the internal piston system, whatever you want to refer to it as. So we're really interested in, in the next video. The next one will probably come pretty quickly. We've spaced these out. This last one we, we filmed about six months ago. In the next couple of months, we'll do the last few rounds, the last 800 rounds, and then get into what's happened to this gun over the 10,000 rounds that we fired through it. All right, so let's go ahead and taper up. Go ahead and let the bolt go closed. Got our brand new roll of tape here because the other tape got so old and brittle. And we only do this so you can go back and compare it to the last video and see that we haven't opened the action or messed with the gun in any way while we're waiting for the next episode. And today is October 7th. And we have uh, 9,200 rounds fired. Wow! <laughs> so, all right, guys. Until next time, and we'll finish this test up then. Um, again, comment down below if you have any ideas for things we can talk about after we're done with our testing. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the thanks and support button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Hit either one of those buttons and you can help support us in the age of demonetization. Thank you for 16 years of support. And last but not least, swing by, check out Copper Custom. We'll talk to you guys soon.